This is the final testing video for a new tone model 2071, which is a stereo music intercom master station. Uh, this was sent in by a customer in New Orleans, and it was in kind of rough shape, really showed its age. This particular master was made in 1967. Uh, stereo master stations typically don't have any built-in speaker, uh, so we have it, I have it set up on the bench with uh, two 8-inch speakers uh, just tied to the master station. I also have a front door entry speaker just for intercom testing. So let's go ahead and look at the controls really, really quick before we turn it on. We have an on-off loudness control. Loudness is the same as volume. Uh, this sets the system-wide volume for the music throughout the house. Uh, behind the decorative cover on the chassis located right here is also a, an intercom volume adjustment, but that has to be set when the set system is installed. You have a tone control which gives you more treble or less treble. You have a balance and control for right and left channels. And you have the selector switch for your different music inputs. Your inputs are AM, FM, and then FM stereo. Uh, what a lot of people don't realize nowadays is that back in even 1967, not all radio stations broadcasted in FM stereo. Many of them were just FM mono. So having a tuner with FM stereo was special. There's also a phonograph input, a tape input. These were built-in accessory um, models that Newtone made at the time. And there's also a TV input where you could tie it into your television speaker and have sound through your intercom from the television, which is pretty advanced for 1967. Down here, you have FM automatic frequency control. This, when it's in the on position, helps keep the FM tuner from drifting off station. Uh, not so much of a factor nowadays uh, with modern FM broadcast. And on this side, you have the FM stereo button. Um, to use this, you would have had the system on set to FM stereo. You would push this in and it would discriminate between FM mono and FM stereo broadcast stations and only the FM stereo stations would be received. Uh, in today's world, this button is rather useless because all FM broadcasts are stereo. There is also, it, you can turn the knob and it affects the separation between the right and left channel for the FM broadcast. Also, not very useful in today's world with the amount of compression and other things that are done in FM broadcast nowadays. It's really not very effective, so this button doesn't have much to do with how well it works. Uh, you have your room control selector switches. The system is designed to handle up to 10 stereo pairs of speakers, which gives you 20 speakers uh, for a full system. Your selection are, you can put a station into listen, or what would be monitor, and listen into sounds in that room. You can turn a station off altogether, which would be no radio and no intercom or you can move it down to the radio intercom position. This is where most systems are set all the time. And then you have your AM and FM tuning dials. So let's go ahead and turn it on. And immediately you get the nice warm glow of the dial lights so you can see the radio dials better. Go ahead and turn it up. We'll switch it over to AM. You don't. Yeah, so here, here's what I meant. And right. this is 680. I'm seeing that uh, what, what the David is doing. 810. 960, I believe. And that's 1620. AM reception in the shop is not great, so that's about what I would expect. Let's go back to 680. 
now been brought to light as a problem on college campus. Now we'll switch over to so FM. Tell about that. When you change, turn the selector knobs, there's an inner and outer knob, and they both move independent, so you have to turn the outer one to FM and then the inner one to FM for both channels to be on FM. Same is true when you go to FM stereo or phone or tape. So it's two knobs to turn each time. This is 107.7. One hundred four point five. Creditrepair.com delivering what they said they were going to. Do. Probably one hundred three point seven. We're starting out. Have cash ready for pickup in minutes at any of Woo's five hundred. Ninety nine point seven. Ninety six point five. Silver Bay Foods is holding a one-only hiring event today. Ninety-four point one, and then down to. Win a four-night weekend getaway, the luxury Odyssey houseboat. Ninety-two point one, which is the strongest station in the shop. Text the word. If we switch it over to FM stereo. Text and win details at kkdv.com. You can actually hear the stereo separation in the two channels, and you know you're receiving in stereo. One of the important uh, aspects of this repair, one of the things we look for on older models is that the sound level between the AM and the FM tuners are approximately equal. So we'll switch back to FM mono, and then we'll switch them both at one time to AM. He's going to and I would say that they're relatively equal. On these early models with early FM tuners, it's not uncommon to have the FM tuner drift out of alignment to the point that sometimes the FM reception will be half or less of what it is on AM. So we'll give the intercom a quick test. I'm going to switch it over to Phono. And we'll go ahead and use our door talk speaker. On these older uh, intercom systems, the front door speaker actually has a push to talk button on it. Uh, the idea, I suppose, is that a visitor would walk up to your front door, push the button, and announce themselves throughout your house. Pretty annoying. Uh, and the inside stations operate just like the outdoor stations. You have music. Uh, when the speaker is left turned on, you have to push the talk button. However, there's no volume control. So this is going to create some feedback because my speakers are very close to each other. Uh, it's not a problem with the repair. It's just a situation you have acoustically. And you can hear the rapping on the speaker. And now I'll do the inside station as the reply. And the intercom functions correctly. Uh, this was a really good repair. Model 2071s are a very rare model. It was very expensive in the 60s to have a set like this. Uh, in the almost 30 years that I've been repairing Newtone intercom systems, this is probably only the fifth or sixth one I've ever seen. So it was a really good repair. It cleaned up really nicely, and it's ready to go back to New Orleans.